Now we'll talk about the financial financing long-term projects by going into the financial markets and how that kind of process works. Typically, long-term money, you have to make sure that the project that you're developing can not only cover the costs that are associated with managing or the, that you're investing in the product itself, but also the cost of financing the project. Even if you're, own, you're using your own money to financing it, there's an opportunity cost because I could take my own money and I could invest it in markets like the stock market and get some return, like say 10% return. If, I, if my project isn't making that level of return, then it makes no sense for me to invest in that project. If there are other projects that I can invest in that are at 15% return, then it makes no sense for me to invest in a project that comes in under that at 12%, right? So you have to make sure that the returns are also covered in the investment that you're making. You, most efficient companies or most very effective companies figure out how to find the most effective projects and finance them at the lowest possible cost. If you're good at this, Financing can be gained at lower cost, debt financing or equity financing. Um, usually, you, whenever you're getting these resources, costs can escalate quickly because over a 10-year project, the difference between 7% uh, interest rate and 10% interest rate ex escalates very quickly. So there's a very strong motivation to manage these long-term financial projects very effectively and manage the financing of them effectively as well. Two ways that you can generally finance a large-scale long-term project, you finance it with equity, that is the owners put money in, or you go find a new owner that puts more money in or buys a piece of the company, or that is using the, ca the capital of the business, or alternatively, you go to a bank and you borrow long-term debt, and that's there's different possible ways to do it. It's long term because it's repaid over more than one year, two years, five years, 10 years, or different types of debt. Um, typically, they have different kinds of forms. And the risk that you take if you borrow too much money is, of course, you might, if there's a problem and all of a sudden you become, the re economy goes into a recession, you may have difficulty um, returning the um, being able to pay the debt and you could go into bankruptcy or pro have problems like that develop. So those are the sorts of things that you wouldn't think about. Let's talk about how companies typically finance with long-term debt. They typically would issue bonds. This is not the same as going to a bank. This is borrowing money from investors, professional investors using the capital markets it's called fixed income markets. Bonds are fixed income. The bondholder, it's a contract to pay. If I'm Starbucks and I want to raise some money, I issue a Starbucks bond. I agree to pay their money back after five years if it's a five-year bond. They, I ask for $100,000. Somebody buys a bond for $100,000. I agree to pay them $100,000 back. And for round numbers, let's just say I agree to give them 5% every year. So that means that if I'm borrowing $100,000, I give them $5,000 in a check every year, it's usually divided by quarters, but let's just say a check every year, they get a $5,000 check for five years, and then they get their $100,000 back at the end. So that's a 5% bond that I would, uh, I would offer and people would buy them. I would make an offering on the, mark, on the capital markets and the fixed income markets. These would be rated by uh, Standard & Poor's, I would issue these bonds. People would get would buy them in their brokerage accounts, or they would buy them have them, have them themselves. You're allowed to do that too. And um, when the time came, they would get their coupon payments. It's called when you get that rate, um, and then they would get their money back at the end of the maturity date, whatever that is. That's how uh, you would tend to borrow from the public. You could also go to bankers. Bankers loan also, but again, that's ten, that tends to be more of these overnight. Uh, deals that I was describing to you before or uh, those kinds of situations where the bank re banking relationship has a line of credit with a company or whatever. If you want to finance a large scale project, you would typically offer these kinds of bonds. And that's why uh, the debt rating of companies can be so important because it affects their, if they're AAA or whatever, it affects the amount of interest they have to pay when they issue bonds. Different types of bonds are uh, 
debentures or unsecured bonds, which means you just send them out and the company agrees to pay. Um, there also are secured bonds. If a company has a difficult time issuing something that doesn't have an unsecured, it's unsecured, they may issue a secured bond for a particular asset that is, is handled, which will be forfeited and sold if the bond isn't paid. Um, serial bonds are ones that are issued with, you know, on a regular basis, multiple times, and you could tend to buy them. Um, and they, these, these all generally have a fixed income or fixed interest rate or coupon rate and, um, and the agreement to pay them after a period of time. Um, then you have floating rate bonds, which are bonds that would be, if interests are going up and down, uh, that the interest would tend to float as a percent above a prime rate or a rate that is established among banks. For example, there's one that's call, often called LIBOR, uh, which is a, 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 an international uh, rate for, of exchange. So there'd be like two percentage points above LIBOR or something like that. And then the last one you might hear about is junk bonds, now called more high yield bonds, which are typically companies that have a higher, they have a harder time raising money from debt. And so they issue these high yield bonds and they tend to have a higher interest rate. Um, than, uh, than, than some of these other like unsecured bonds in particular. But these are all corporations and you as an investor can go buy these bonds and put a portfolio together that minimizes risk and brings a reasonably high return uh, without the risk. Of, and these are all guaranteed to have the money back unless there's a bankruptcy or whatever, but the, they agree to pay you your money back. So they're lower risk generally than equity where you have no guarantee whatsoever that you'll get your money back, only that you own a piece of the company. And if all goes well, you'll continue to own it. Um, financing with equity is the next piece, which is typically companies, when you make money, you retain the money and you can finance with the money that you've earned from prior profits. That's the retained earnings. Or you may offer equity, offer to buy some equity um, from, um, to, to, uh, to issue equity for people to, to give you additional financing so that you could raise some money uh, for various kinds of projects or to pay off some of the debt that you have previously um, by raising money as owners. The thing about owners is they have call, they have a call on the profits of the company and you pay them by dividends. Um, it lasts until they sell their shares or until for whatever reason the, um, the company calls the shares and brings them in and maybe if the company is sold or whatever um, and there's enough owners that want to sell, all the owners have to tender their shares. Um, these are very long-term funds generally and this is just another way to do it. But again, you've sold forever a portion of your company uh, when you sell equity. So that's the downside. You can't get rid of this person, unless this, this owner. That owner can sell their share if it's a public company also, but you can't get rid of the fact that you have an owner there um, easily unless there's a, a change of control or some other sort of governance issue that occurs. Here's an example of uh, some stocks, just to talk through this a little bit. They tend to value, the value of them trades on the marketplace on a particular 52-week uh, period in this case in column one. You have a high trading value and a low trading value per share. Um, you also have the stock and the symbol as you go across here. Um, here's the stock, Nike, and its symbol here. This dividend says that it was paid out a dollar and forty-four cents per uh, per year, and this is um, of you paid say seventy-seven, seventy-six, ninety-eight for it, and you get a dollar back. It's a low return. Dividend yield is one point three percent. You can see there. This means that this two, two million shares were traded over that period of time. The closing value was 110. Notice that it's lower than the high, but it's closer to the high than the low. So the net change uh, between this, the last reporting period is 2.13. And you can see that for the other shares. So essentially what they're saying is how much the stock has been worth over the last 52 week period, how much dividends they pay and what that percent yield is. And then how many shares were sold and what the price is and whether it's going up, which is the plus or down. That's what this sort of a, um, a screen would tend to show. Here's another example of uh, some more companies. You can see their share price, dividend per share. 
$20 in this case of American Eagle dividend per share. And you can see that the dividend yield here is a bit higher, 2.2%. Earnings per share is 83 cents per share, but notice that the share price is quite a bit lower and the yield, the dividend yield is higher. And so the price per earnings is how much you have to pay, that is the price per share divided by the earnings per share, it's 0.83 cents. And that should give you that 24.12. 20, and that's just, this is, uh, you can see how highly valued the operation of the business is by how big their price to earnings ratio is. The dividend yield is the percent of the, sh it's how much the dividend is per share divided by the stock price. So that's, um, this is how you get your returns as an equity investor and that goes along until you sell. Notice that's different than liabilities where there's an end date where the, um, this by bonds where there's an end date where those things all come due. So let's just talk a bit.